we heard about setting goals for our lives, um, it, how important that is. And then the second week, we, um, uh, Luke talked about training, how important it is to train ourselves to get to a goal. And last week, Andy talked about who's coaching you, who's your coach, who's, who's those people in your lives that are coaching you on in your journey of faith. And today, we're, there's another one for next week, but for today, we're going to talk about how do I fit in this team? And when we're talking about team, we're talking about family. We're a family here, aren't we? And we, love, we, we should love each other. We should be um, together as a team. But this morning, we're looking at our, how, we're gonna, how do you fit in this team? And we know that a team is a group of people who are together working on a specific task. Um, we are, as Christians, we are um, not just a part of this team, but a, a large Christian world team together fighting for one cause. And we've all got a common goal, and that is to bring people to Jesus. That is, our, that is the Great Commission, that we help bring people to Jesus. We're a team here. And God is our head coach, if you like, um, along with Jesus who saved us and the Holy Spirit who empowers us. We are a team. And this team is, a, and we're playing a huge game. And this game is a very long game. And it's a tough game because it is a 365-year game. It's a 24 hours a day game, yeah? Because it, life never stops happening. And like any team, we play against an opponent, and if you've been in the church long enough, we know who that opponent is, and that's the enemy. It's the devil that is, comes, and his common goal, he's relentless in getting to his goal. His goal is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But we know that we are more than conquerors for him who loves us. So most of us, practically wise, we all engage in teamwork, whether it is at work with a group of colleagues, working on tasks together, whether it is at home, from cleaning your house, to just getting your children out to school on time is just a mammoth task in itself. It requires teamwork, doesn't it? And as I'm talking, you're probably thinking of all the different types of teams that you are involved with. So I've just jotted a few of those down for myself, where I'm involved with different teams. And the first thing is, is my family. Now, we've all got common goals, these, these teams that I'm a part of. And the common goal for my family is to hopefully create a happy and functional, <laughs> questionable, um, uh, family who are all serving Jesus, right? Uh, the youth ministry, kids ministry here, I'm a part of that team. And our common goal is to see children's lives changed. The leadership team here, our common goal is to build kingdom. The neighborhood where I live, I would hope that our common goal is to create a peaceful and safe environment to grow up in. The worship team here, we create together a, an atmosphere of worship to glorify God. And all very different teams. And you're thinking of the different teams that you're involved with. But above all, this team here is created to bring people to Jesus. So why this team? Why is it important to be part of a team? And as you're there, sitting there thinking and listening about what's, what's been spoken, I want you to think, how do I fit in this team? You might be sitting there who perfectly knows their position in this team, have been here for years and quite fulfilled where you are. Or you might be sitting there, been coming for a while, and actually you've lost your way a bit, not quite sure where you fit in. Or you might be your first time here and you're like, what are you on about being part of a team? Wherever you're at this morning, just let's listen to how you could fit and be a part of this team here. So I've asked three people who are going to come up right now very quickly to ex tell you what they value the most about being part of this team very quickly. And I've told them 30 seconds. That is it. You're off. You're, you're kicked off. Right, so Luke. Yeah, so I'm part of the production team. Um, and about four or five years ago, um, I was training how to do the visuals, so all the screens, things like that. Um, then five years on, uh, I'm still doing that, but I get to train up other people now when they're doing it. So it's nice to be released into that, uh, actually training other people up and helping other people be released into what they're doing as well, and they're part of the team. Brilliant. Jess? So I'm a life group leader as part of the church, and um, being part of that team is 
and then it's the <laughs> way that you get to kind of coach people through what they're going through in their situations is yeah. amazing we were kind of thrusted into a team we were quite new to the church when we started doing life groups so yeah cool <laughs> thanks right. jess well, I've been here for about 100 years. <laughs> and, and so, throughout it all, what can, you, what can you do? You can ask yourself, what can I do? Volunteer. Because I can, I can tell you now, if you volunteer, even if it's only washing pots, volunteer. There's people in here that every time I let her do, they would always in kitchen, washing pots after. And I've never told them to do it. That's Andy and Lou. Yeah, you know, right. and other people as well that, that organise things. And so, get involved. You say, what can I do? Just volunteer for something else. And somebody, well, somebody will say, oh, she's good at that. He's good at that. Yeah. Why don't we ask him to help and do that? Mother and toddler and things like that. Don't be frightened to volunteer for things. We've, we've all done it. There's people here that's been here a long, long time. Freedom and chocolate. We've always volunteered. And that's how you get involved. Sorry. Thanks. Man. Thanks, Trev. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my word. <laughs> He's nicking my points, so that's why I'm kicking him off. <laughs> Very different views, isn't it, and how we feel valued here and being part, and how, how it is so important to be part of a team. So why, why be a player on this team? Well, the Bible refers to us here as being the bride of Christ, and Jesus loves the bride of Christ. And if we want to become more like Jesus, then we want to, we should do, we want to be part of the Bride of Christ here, our family, our church. Church is so important to God. Worshipping together, when we come together to worship him, great, amazing things can happen. When we're together journeying one with each other, when we've got the same mind like Christ, when we're, when we're journeying together, we, we are stirring each other on, we're encouraging one another. But you might be thinking, yeah, but Leah, uh, I'm just an introvert. I don't do social gatherings very well. And I just like to come at 11 o'clock and then leave very quickly. And that's fine. But you know what? When we, when we get to heaven, it's not just going to be you. <laughs> We're gonna, there's a bunch of us going to be there. And, you know, let's just get used to it now. Might as well. Okay. So you know why team is important? Well, how you could fit into this team? And I was think, reading about Gideon. And you might think... Gideon, how did he work in a team? Why not pick like the disciples, great model of teamwork, or, or um, Moses and Aaron, or Paul and Timothy? But as I was reading Gideon, I found that I found it such an inspiring story because he was a man who didn't look at himself as anything. He was a man that um, God called him to do a job that was immense. And he went on this journey that, um, that you see as we read on, as we see, becomes this mighty man um, called and fulfilled in his purpose. And we've, we're going to read the story here in Judges about Gideon. The angel of the Lord appeared to him whilst he was working in the wine press, where no one could see him, and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. You shall save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. But God said, Go in this strength that is yours. Save Israel from Midian. Haven't I just sent you? Gideon said to me, me, my master, how can I? Can I save Israel? Look at me. My clan's the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the runt of the litter. God said to him, I'll be with you. Believe me, you'll defeat Midian as one man. Now, these words were supposed to be encouraging to Gideon. Can you imagine the angel of the Lord just appearing to you in that moment? He must have been scared. Can you imagine an angel of the Lord just appearing to, to like Louise, sorry, you're getting picked on, Louise, and say, you mighty woman of valor, you, you're going to save Sheffield for me. And may, can you imagine how you'd feel? Me? me I'm just no one. I'm no one. I'm not qualified. I'm inexperienced. I'm no good. Why, pick somebody else. I'm the runt of the litter. Why, why choose me? Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever been in that position where you, you think like a job opportunity or whatever was asked of you, something bigger than what you thought you were capable of? Me? How can I do that? I've got the courage to do that. I can't do that. And, and you rattle off all these excuses. Gideon's response, me? Why me? I'm nobody. But you know, to fit into the team, you need to know, firstly, that you are chosen. You are chosen player. You are chosen by God. 
back in secondary school, um, I, school was all right for me. It, didn't, it weren't the best years of my life, but um, I liked some subjects like history, French, a bit of English. But there's those subjects that I didn't like, maths, I couldn't do that to save my life. And then also PE. What was the point in PE? All the malarkey of getting dressed and changed into these horrible brief things. Oh, they were awful. But, but not just that, I'm not the most physical type of person. I can only do 2.5 miles an hour on my treadmill at home. I'm just not physical at all. And some of you might be able to identify with me, but when you get chosen in the teams for team playing games, if you're like me, and the team captain is calling out name by name and just yours isn't being called out. That was me. I was always the person who was just always last. I was the person who... who and you know how, how you make you feel? That you're worthless. That you're, you're nothing. That nobody wants me to be part of their team. You just, I felt embarrassed in that moment. And, but as, as I, I didn't like hockey and stuff like that, but I did find that I really enjoyed playing netball and I enjoyed playing centre player and I really enjoyed that. And people started looking at me and thinking, oh, you, you're good at that. Okay, we'll start picking you. And you know, when you, at the moment, you get chosen. Like you're not chosen last, you're chosen third or something. I was like, yes, I've been chosen. When you're chosen, by, when you know that you're chosen by the king, you physically act different. You are full of confidence. You walk with a step, confident step, head held high. You act confident. And that's how we should be doing every single day of our lives. We should be waking up. It is a choice. We have to wake up. We have to remind ourselves that we are chosen by the king. We are chosen to do what God has called us to do in that moment, in that day. We are chosen. We've got all authority. And God, Gideon's response, me, I'm nobody. Why choose me? Choose someone stronger. But God's direction sometimes doesn't always make sense, does it? There's purpose in his directions. Some of you can't see what you can be because you don't like who you are. I'll say that again. Some of you can't see what you can be because you don't like who you are. God has chosen you. You're a player. And today we can be confident and assured that God has chosen us. Even if we don't know what that is, God's chosen us for today. Purpose is living in purpose today. God sees your potential, but what, see, what you see, but you see what you choose to see. If all you see is something that is worthless, that's not worth bringing to the team, something that is, um, you, you know, you feel inadequate, inexperienced, whatever that may be for you, you are chosen. You are a daughter and son of the king. We need to change perspective. Um, if you've been in the church for a while, you'll know that years back we, had, um, we ran a nursery, a daycare every single day. And when I was 19, I um, started working there. I trained. I worked my, my way up. The, as, and as roles moved and people left for different jobs, um, the opportunity came for me to manage this nursery. And I was like, me? Who am I to lead that? I'm so young. I'm 24. or I can't even remember how old I was. I was really young, inexperienced. Me? How am I going to be responsible for a work team of 15 or whatever it was? How am I going to be responsible for keeping children safe of 50 kids or what? Me? I can't do that. And that's what it's like, isn't it? You put that, you keep thinking of the excuses why we can't do a job. But you know, that's exactly where the opposing team wants us to, to keep thinking. He wants us to be inward looking at all our insecurities, all the stuff that we can't do. And he's very happy at keeping us at that. But we need to declare that we are chosen, to know that you're chosen. Two Peter, uh, 1 Peter sorry, 2 says, But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling for priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. That's the truth. We're all called for a high calling, for a high purpose, because we are his instruments. We've all got a job to do, and they're all different. Even though Gideon felt that he was timid, he was that person who, who was weak, God knew his weaknesses anyway. 
Aren't you glad that God chooses us no matter how we are and all our failings and, and you know, aren't you glad? I'm so glad. <laughs> and we're never going to be perfect and he's still going to love us anyway. So now you know you're chosen. The second thing is that you need to know that you, we need to be passionate players. We need to be passionate. We need to be purposeful in what we do here together. I'm sure some of you, most of you, would have seen um, The X Factor or Britain's Got Talent or The Voice or all those different kinds of programs that the main common goal for that is that they want to see people some, uh, release something in somebody, see something in them and make them outstanding. And I'm, I'm not saying that we all have to be on reality TV shows to be to recognize our potential and be purposeful. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is we need each other to see the potential in us. We need each other to help us stir each other on. Like this morning with Jess, well, come on, Jess, you can do this. We're all behind you. We've all seen the potential in you. So sometimes we get to, it might be some of you here maybe that have reached your middle age years and you think, well, I've not, I've not actually, I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel like I'm reaching my full potential. I feel like I've still got something maybe burning in me, a passion that I've never explored, something that's in me that, that I've just pushed. And we put a lid on it. We put, it, uh, put a lid on, we contain it and keep it down, thinking that's just a nice thing to do. But you know, God has designed you to become more. And if you're sitting there thinking, I've got all these passions, but I don't know where that actually fits here. Talk to us. Have a conversation about where you feel like you can fit into this team. What passions have you got? Do you want to go on mission? Do you want to cook for the elderly? Whatever that might be for you. Where, what is your passion? What are you passionate about? Maybe you've put a cap on because, and the lid on and kept it contained because it's what people have spoken over you over your life. Maybe um, somebody has said to you, oh, no, you, you won't be very good at doing that. And that might be the very thing that God has designed you to do. What about education? Maybe education has told you that you can't go down that path. You're not going to be very good at this. Go down this path, construction work or whatever that may be. Whatever it is that you can relate to, whatever you're thinking about right now, God is asking you that you may want a bit more of you to take the cap off to take the lid off because you are capable to go beyond Gideon's response to God who me I can't do that I'm not brave enough you know as you step out God, God is only asking us to be willing and as we step out and start serving in different areas I feel that um, God will increase your capabilities he will go beyond what you can imagine. He can do immeasurably more than we can ask or ever imagine. Don't limit God. Speak to the limitations and be intentional about going beyond where you're at. Um, this last term, Luke and I go in, went into um, a local primary school where we go in and mentor some Y6 children. And these particular children find it may find it a bit hard through the transition process from moving from primary to secondary school. So I had three girls and Luke had three boys. And we start off um, the term by just discovering who they are and what their likes, what they dislike, what they don't like about uh, school, what they're worried about. And one particular question that I ask them is, what do you want to be when you grow up? What, do you wanna, what, what gets you passionate? What are you passionate? What do you want to be when you leave school? And one, the first girl said, I want to be, um, she said, I've got two, okay, two. Um, she wants to be a vet and um, a hairdresser. Brilliant, great, go for it. Second girl, um, she does gymnastics. I want to do, uh, be a professional gymnast. Brilliant, excellent. And then the third girl, with all passion in her, said, I really, really, really want to work in the counter, and I'm not going to say the name of the shop, the counter behind this big clothing store that sells really cheap clothes that we all probably shop at. <laughs> Just saying that. And, you know, I'm not belittling working in retail at all, but um, in that moment, I felt that she'd put a cap 
on herself. I felt like she had limited her um, expectations of herself to limit where she probably she could go further in, in her education. We need to go beyond. We need to be intentional and go beyond where we think we're capable. God's made us all creative. Every one of us, no matter if you can draw or not, we're all creative beings, aren't we? And it's not just about singing or playing an instrument. You know, back in the day, and actually we do see it today, that some, some people felt like they would only reach their full potential and purpose in life if they were up on the platform preaching or leading worship or a life group leader or, you know, something that's a, more of a platform uh, mentality when actually God didn't design that for them. God didn't design for them to fit into that mold. And so we saw that some people began to become frustrated. And, you know, God's asking you to be who you're called to be. God has designed you to your own mold and your own um, calling and purpose in life. God has made everyone outstanding at something. But we all just need to find that outstanding something. We've all got a purpose. And it says in the Bible, you know, to find that fit, we need to come into the house of God. Like I said earlier, we need each other to stir each other on, to bring that potential out. Whether it could be your life group leader, it could be we do the Engage course twice or so a year, where one of the weeks we talk about how do you fit in this team? What are your gifts at? Where are your talents? How could we use this to benefit and glorify Jesus and, and, be, and help Jesus, uh, people come to know Jesus? Um, it could be just to position yourself purpose in the team. Or other, other practical things like uh, there's website thing tools that you can do, like the 15 personalities test that's free. There is the Myers-Briggs thing. There's all these different practical ways in which you can find out who you are and where you best would flourish. And we, we can help you do that. What are you passionate about? How could you, you be used in this team? And be, think outside the box, be creative, share ideas and believe in yourself. Gideon, he was unsure of his calling, he didn't know. And because he was unsure and, and felt a bit, didn't believe in what God has called him to do, he, he asked him for signs to say that, yeah, I am with you, Gideon. He brought some food to an angel and the angel came down and consumed it all. And then on two consecutive nights, he put a fleece of wool out and I always get this bit mixed up, <laughs> which way around it is. The fleece be wet and the ground be dry, and then the fleece be dry and the ground be wet. He was unsure. He wasn't sure about his calling. My passions, what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about um, kids' ministry. I love it. In this season, I'm passionate about that. And I never, never used to be. In fact, it was prophesied over me when I was about 16. You're going to work with children. I was like, I remember at the time thinking, no, nah, that's not for me. That's not, no, no, no. <laughs> they annoy me, kids. But you know, what I did was I began to position myself. I wanted to be used. I, it, from a young age, I, you know, my passion was building kingdom. And I, I put myself in a position that I'd be willing to serve wherever. And I, I, and I worked at Jigsaw and I, I've worked in kids' church. And my passion is to see G children just worshiping Jesus to see children praying for one another. In the holiday clubs, we, we speak the gospel to them, and I'm so passionate that, about them going home knowing that this Jesus that they keep talking about, he loves me. I'm passionate also about seeing people um, trained, uh, discipled, and released into their calling. I'm passionate about that. Jess, prior example, you know, we, we, we want to be a church that is empowered, that empowers people 1 Corinthians 9 says, You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. This is message version. Everyone runs. One wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for that finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it and then missing out myself. That's where I want to be. I want to be that passionate about what I'm doing. I want to give everything that I've got. I want to train myself in the passions that I have to get better for Jesus. 
you might be sitting there thinking, okay, Leah, I get that I need to be part of a team. I get it. I get that, you know, we all need each other. I get that we need to be passionate about, but actually, I haven't got any passion to do anything. I'm just, I'm no passion there. Either one, position yourself to be willing to serve about something, because my, I felt with kids, my passion grew for that. But also, it might be that you're sitting there thinking, I don't know how my passions can fit in this church. I don't know how it's never been done before. Think, we need to think outside the box. That's why we need each other. We need to, each other in this team to talk, have some conversations. Hey, what about this idea? Hey, what about this? How can we do this? To reach more people groups for Jesus. That's what it's all about. Gideon always had the potential to save Israel. But I think, you know what? If, if God showed us our end purpose, I think we'd chicken out half the time. I think we'd say, oh, it's too hard. I'm not doing that. No way. I'm not doing that. And there are times in our lives when we, we get the injury times. If God had showed us what we'd go through, I, th- I think we'd chicken out. But those injury times, those, those times of hurt, those times of disappointment, those times of um, feeling frustrated and setbacks, there's pain in the injury time. But you know, we, God doesn't want us to despise those times. God wants us to see the purpose in them. There is, there is purpose in the injury time. As a young mum, we've got four children. And um, when the twins were born, at that time we had four kids under five. And it was really quite difficult, really. <laughs> it's just a blur. Um, but I remember thinking, okay, because I'm a... a I love the church, I'm building kingdom, I was doing lots of jobs, but then I found myself, I couldn't do everything that I wanted to do anymore. And I began to, be, I became frustrated. I became frustrated because I, all of a sudden I've got all these kids to look after and I've got to do 20 nursery and school runs and there's dirty nappies everywhere and the house is all dirty and, you know, the list goes on and, and I can't do the stuff that I used to do at church. But then I just felt that one day God said to me, you know, you need to be the best that you can be in this season of your life. This is ordained by me. You need to, to help be a good leader for your, for your children. You need to raise them up and be passionate about them. You need to be, there is purpose in this, to raise them up in the ways of me. And sometimes we need to take a perspective change, don't we? We need to change perspective in how we look at the injury times. There's purpose in them. Don't despise them. Romans 2, 28, sorry, Romans 8, 28, um, it says, For we know that in all things, that's the whole journey, God works for the good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. The message puts it like this. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. You know, I don't think we'll ever reach a point where we wake up and say, right, I know what my purpose in life is, that's it. Do you know, I think it's a, it's a journey. And God reveals it to us step by step, each te- step that we take. We live in purpose now. We live in purpose now. It's what, up to us how, how we outlive that purpose to release the potential. And thirdly, we need to be united players. Don't switch off Wednesday, people. <laughs> united players. <laughs> so later in the story of Gideon, we see that Gideon is newly armed with the spirit of the Lord on him. He has fought battle after battle and seen the victories. Now God's kind of proved himself, hasn't he, to him, that God has he's, he's helped him run through the battles. And he's got, by now, he's got thousands and thousands of warriors behind him. He's, he's probably thinking, all right, I can do this. I've got a good bunch of people following me. Okay, God, yes, I know I am called and purposeful. But then God tells him to do something. And he tells him to send home all the, the soldiers that are afraid. Are you, are you serious, God? Are you serious? He wants us to, tell, to send them all home. Can you imagine Gideon telling his soldiers that? 
All right, everyone is afraid, off you go, you can go home now. Can you imagine what the conversations would be like with those soldiers? What's he saying that for? Is he he's lost it? It's gone crackers. Can you imagine the conversations? Oh, I don't know, he's lost it now. I'm not, what, what are we following him for? Can you imagine the conversations? Oh, can you imagine the disunity that it was going to start to cause? Sending all those 22,000 home caused a stir. Have you ever been in a team where the team member is not pulling their weight? I have at uni. You know when you get sent an assignment to do work together as a team, you go away for a couple of weeks, come back, reevaluate your team, uh, your target, what, all the jobs that they had to do, and you, there was always one that didn't do what they were supposed to do. Always. And you, what pressure that puts on the team. It brings disunity, it brings pressure to meet targets, everyone's feeling it, and everyone's just, it just brings disunity. Philippians 2 says, if you've got anything out at all out following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor, agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. <clears throat> you know, in the New Testament, we see um, Paul writing lots of letters to the, the different churches about unity. We see uni disunity amongst those churches. In Acts, we see that there was disunity between um, feeding the Hebrew and Greek widows. The Greek widows were always being left out. They weren't getting any food. We saw disunity there. In Romans, we see that some churches wanted to worship on the Sabbath. Some churches wanted to wor worship on the Sunday, Saturday, whichever the Sabbath was. <laughs> the Corinthian church, we see disunity amongst the, the teaching gifts. You know, there was, we see a lot across the board that the disunity was happening. And God doesn't like uni disunity. He loves unity. As we said earlier, we are the bride of Christ. We need to be unified together. Similarly today, we see cultural differences, ethnical differences, um, doctrinal differences, just personality clashes. We see that today, but God is into unity. We need to be unified for a purpose. Gideon and his 300 men that were only left, 300, were unified together for a purpose, to win battle our purpose here, as this team here, is to bring people to Jesus. And we need each other to do that. God has made us all different. We're all different. We've all got a part to play and we need each other. We need the eyes and the feet and the, and the hands and, the, and the, the legs. We need each other. We've all got a different part to play. But we need, also need to give honour to those that are the hidden parts, like the kidney and the, the liver or whatever you are, <laughs> those who don't really like to be up front and, you know, a, a backless, you know, backbone people, <laughs> it, who we need each other in this to work. And Paul was urging the Philippi church that we all have to be like-minded. And like-minded means to literally think the same. So if we want to be more like Jesus, we need to think the same as Jesus. And, and we know that he came to serve. Philippians 2, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. So if we want to become like Jesus, and, and Jesus came to serve, then, then we, we need to serve. We need to serve each other and not to be served. Serving each other would bring unity. Can you imagine? Can you see a church that is full of unity, fighting together side by side? Yeah, we have our mishaps, don't we, and our differences, but we need to honor one another and be unified together. And in the end, we, say, we see that Gideon and his 300 men shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Yeah. These men were behind Gideon until the end. He fight until they won. God is into unity, and we can't allow disunity here. A team needs to be united to win against our opponent, the devil, who wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And we win. We know we win, but we could be better together. 
doing, if everyone found their purpose in life, if everyone um, found, released their potential, if we all took our lids off, can you imagine what our church would look like? Does the band want to come up? So I'm just going to apply this. Wherever you are right now, you could be very fulfilled in where you are. Brilliant. That's so good. We need you. Wherever you feel like, actually, I feel a bit lost. I feel a bit like I thought I did know where I fit in, but actually, I don't really know anymore. Or you may be here for the first time, or actually, well, I, don't, you, I still don't know what you're on about, Leah, but I know that I need something. I need to be a part of this team. Wherever you feel like you are right now, I want to, I want to challenge you to do something about it, to, to be intentional, have a conversation with your life group leader. Have um, a conversation or just try and talk to us about where you think that you could fit in, best fit in here. We, want, we need each other, don't we? Let's stand. And I'm going to pray. And I'm, I'm going to pray um, an all-round prayer. Um, and uh, this prayer is that we're going to commit today to following, uh, not to following, we're all following Jesus, but we're going to commit today to bring unity. You know, I see a church, if we're all unified together and all following our purpose and releasing potential, then I see a church that is thriving. I see a church that is progressing and moving forward so much quicker. I see a church that is unified together, winning the battles together, side by side together. This is church. This is our team. I love it. Love our team. So I'm going to pray, and maybe it's, you need to do something about that this morning. We're going to commit today that we are our team together, finding, living in our purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just pray for every single one here this morning, Lord, where you know where we're all at. You know those who are fulfilled in what they're doing, those that don't know what they're doing, Lord, who may have lost their way a little bit. God, I just pray this morning that you will help us to be intentional about where we're going. Lord, help us to be intentional and have those conversations, Lord, that will help us to release and be all that you've designed and made us to be. Father, I pray that you'll give us the courage to step out, Lord, to lift the lid, to not be contained anymore, Lord, to release the passions and the gifts within us, Lord, to help each other, to bring people to know more about you. It's what it's all about. You are all we're all about, Lord. And this morning we dedicate again today that we are unified. We're fighting together, Lord, to, to see your glory in this place. Lord, we want to see more people come to know you. Lord, this is what it's all about. And Father, I pray that we'll see that happen. God, I just pray that you'll help us, Father, to be all that we're called to be. That we know that we are chosen. To know that we are passionate and be purposeful in what we're doing here. And Lord, that we stand with unity, one with another, together, fighting. Because we know who wins. We know the end story. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.